because we moved off that one minute chart, a bellwether time frame for me is 15 minutes. Okay, so if I'm looking for something that is liquidity based, where I'm looking for a draw on liquidity that's going to have an impact for the session. I'm not talking about an hour candle where I can trade inside of one hour candle and I can get a scalp and I can, you know, I can make what an average person can earn in a week with every single one hour candle. I don't need to do that. You shouldn't try to do that. But for the sake of understanding the highest degree of probability where the market's going to reach for, you have to come off that one minute. You got to come off that five minute, go to at least a 15 minute time frame. Why? Because the majority of short-term fluctuations that's going on in intraday algorithmic price delivery is on that time frame. Now I'm going to say it in simpler terms. The liquidity you're looking for as a general go-to that's going to serve you the best is a 15-minute time frame chart. That's the ones that are so clear and they're obvious. They don't hide them from you. They can never hide them from you because this is the first one they work off of. Period. Don't believe what I said. Go back and look at every fucking day in every market and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's there every single day. Now, over time, you're going to get good at it. You're going to get better at knowing which side it's going to reach for. But I'm going to show you it's not hard. When we're in this little consolidation in here, which is all part of this larger consolidation that's to the left. You see all that? Where is the market jagged versus where it's smooth? Now, for the folks that don't know English very well, what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at the difference between how this high and this high and this high and these highs here, you can pretty much see how these are all like real, real uniform. It's real smooth. It doesn't make any kind of real jagged run up and, and run away. Notice that? But where do we see that type of delivery in price? Down here. This is all jagged, okay? So if you were looking at it like a saw tooth or the edge of a saw or some type of a serrated edge, down here, they cut up all of the liquidity that was resting below that low, that low, they ripped through it, it caused this one here, and then what did it do? It ran right up here, but then it left this nice smooth little area right in here. So what happens is that retail-minded traders they see this price action and they envision this little area right in here. This is their safety or safe house. That's their, this is this little area right here where they feel that if they go into the marketplace and they try to go short, they feel that this is a it's a safe room. Okay, my house has one. Most other people that have high security and things like that, those places in your house where it's fortified, it has means of protecting yourself with food, water, medicine, weapons, you know, lighting, uh, communication where you can talk outside the house without even having a, a connection with your house phone. Who even has that anymore, right? But the idea is this is a safe space for retail traders because they trust this as what? They see this as what their textbooks have taught them all along, that this is resistance. They think that price cannot get through that. This is strong resistance. So that means what? The market has to bend to its will of they're classifying that as resistance? That's exactly what those books taught me. And I lost my fucking ass. <laughs> okay? I lost my ass trying to use that logic. Every single time I trusted what I thought was obvious and strong resistance, if it looks smooth like this, you can bet your ass they're running through that. Just like the SWAT team's going to kick that door in. They've already done the SWAT move down here. They've already busted through the door. It's all busted up and jagged. Here, it's all smooth. Real smooth highs. And they do this to instigate the idea that it's safe to trust that as resistance. So what will traders do? They will go, they'll want to go short. So when they go short, if they're thinking about protecting their money, and that's a good thing, they'll place their stop loss right above these highs. What kind of stops?
buy stops. Okay, so they're thinking that if they can go short in here or in here, or they don't catch the move, they see this run here, what are they going to do? They're going to chase it. They're going to chase it and go short. Then they have all this potential inefficiency that they could actually see go against them while they're in a the trade, and that might squeeze them out. Or if they're just a chaser in price because they don't know where the market's going to go and they haven't really over leveraged they use the smallest in terms of leverage they can afford to even chase it even though that's not a good way of trading but they can afford to put a stop loss off here because they're not trying to trade with 15 contracts <laughs> wink wink nudge nudge they have the smallest leverage on so they're going to place their stop loss up here because they understand they're not that great in terms of precision, but they know that this is proven to them that they think it's going to be acting as resistance. It's not, but that's what they're being trained to think. So if you do this over and over and over again, reading books, looking at the examples that they want you to see, you will believe, you will be indoctrinated seeing that this is resistance. So therefore the market should not go through that. See how that that it, it ingrains in your mind that you're going to believe it because you paid for the book. You took the time to read the book and these people are claiming they've been doing it before you and they claim it works. So right away, you're, you're being brainwashed. I'm not trying to brainwash you. I'm telling you, don't believe anything I say. Use the logic that I'm talking about and go in and see if it doesn't work for you. In every single instance, the people that try to do that with a, a real interest in trying to debunk it, they become a student and then they get fucking funded. They make money and some of them have gone on to make a lot of money. And that's why I, that's how I market myself. I'd say, don't believe what I say. Go in, use the logic that I'm teaching you and you see if I'm full of shit or not. And you'll right away know if this stuff works. You don't need to listen to somebody else. And when you see this logic that is turned on its head, retail logic is what I'm referring to. There's no need to go down below all this stuff or even revisit it when this is left intact. This is all smooth. This is all smooth and it needs to be made jagged. So if price is down here, how do we use that logic to answer my son? I said, look where this is smooth and you see how this is smashed down several times. It looks like, you know, sharp teeth on the side of a, a, an edge of a saw, right? So they tore us all up down here. And this is all left smooth and intact. So when we're in these small little consolidations like this and you don't know what side the marketplace is going to run for, look for where it's left smooth edges. That's this side here. I was not bearish this morning. You should not have been bearish if you were a student of mine because we've already seen how they've done the damage down here. Plus, the market is still trying to reach for that old daily high. What do I mean by that? Let's go to a daily chart. See this one over here? On the weekly range, my analysis says I'm going to look to see if it can try to trade up to that. So until proven wrong, unless CPI comes out tomorrow and com completely dis decimates all this market structure here, I'm anticipating today or going into CPI tomorrow that we run up into and through the 16,264. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm using the December contract. So let's take a quick little peek real quick over at the this is the symbol for March 2024 okay so when you're on trading view it's NQ H the symbol H is for March the symbol for June is M the symbol for S uh, I'm sorry for September is S and the letter, the letter Z is for the December contract so we're rolling away from the December of 2023 into March of 2024 that H is for that contract month Okay, so if you do this, you can see my level's already there. So it's already close to that, and then this one right there. So let me drop it over here. Doesn't take much to get to the March objective. And we pierced it today. I don't think it stops there is what I'm getting at, because I'm using the logic that even though that its volume is rolling out of December into March, December's still going to be traded. December is still going to be traded even on the day of you know, expiration. It's, it may not be a lot, but it's still being traded. So I'm not advocating for you to trade it that long, but there's unfinished business up here based on what that front month right now, which is December still, even though volume is highest in the, the 
the March 2024 contract, December's still active. So you can't discount that. So when I'm looking at it, I, I don't just simply say, okay, forget what December contract's doing in its chart, only focus on 2024. Because if you do that, you are literally putting blinders on. You, you, you can't simply because you rolled over and you're actively trading now uh, March contract in 2024. If you're trading this contract here, then there's nothing wrong about doing that. But you can't ignore, you can't be oblivious to what that December contract still has in play. Because that liquidity still is what? It's a factor. So if we have that in mind, we go back into uh, December contract here. Go back down into the 15 minute time frame. So while we're in here, we're going up into what? Time. Okay, Dave, listen. Don't get too crazy, okay, because time is still the most important thing. You're taking a post I made on Twitter out of context. I was practicing just reading price action just by in and of itself, but the importance of time cannot be diminished. All the real moves, the sustained price runs that run for significant price runs to inefficiencies or liquidity are going to be based on a time delivery schedule. It is always based on time. Time, 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 time. Without time, you can't do shit, period. You can't do anything. Because if the market ain't open, can you put anything into uh, into a trade? No. That you might argue and say, well, that's the extreme argument. And of course, yeah, it goes without saying. But none of the sustained price runs or significant price runs ever manifest themselves out of the time periods that I pointed out. Look at the macro. That's that's a small window of time. 20 minutes, 20 little minutes, okay? And I can time every significant price run that's going to occur intraday on a one-minute chart. That's what a macro does. So can you tell, can you hear how I've been wanting to do this and I've been starved? <laughs> I didn't want to be here. I didn't set my schedule to be here for a long time, but I've been really missing doing this. And now because I'm out of the cage for you know a little while today, I'm having fun with it. But don't discount time or place price over top of time time is always going to be paramount and above price always every instance of it every single instance time is going to be the absolute paramount principle that is going to be the largest factor in why price is going to move don't believe me look at the economic calendar to cancel any argument against it initially right away because cpi tomorrow when that comes out it doesn't matter what the fuck you trade. It's going to rip your face off. It's going to rip your face off. You're not, you're not going to be able to trade it. You're going to be decimated. And nobody can stand in front of that. Not not with any assurity that they're going to be you know, having an outcome that's favorable. Not consistently. And I feel like I'm a pretty good trader. And I can't find consistency ahead of CPI every single time it comes around. Once in a while, I get it right. Once in a while, but most of the time, I'm not. So I have to wait for that first initial delivery and then look for where it left porous wake in that price run. That means inefficiencies, fair value gaps, and what liquidity in terms of old highs or old lows that they left smooth like this. That is that complicated, folks? Forget everything else that this jawbone about, okay? Isn't it easier? For you to not worry about what setting your indicator should be on or what indicator to even use, what moving average, what fucking trend line to draw from, okay, what volume node to work, worry about, nothing about a depth of market. You don't need to worry about what any particular price set on any DOM is going to be any factor for you. No, it's, no, it's not needed because you can clearly see at this level here, 16,120 has buy side or buy stops resting above it because it's smooth. You don't need a depth of market. You don't need level two data. You don't need a market map or book map or anything else out there to do this. It's all on one chart, one time frame. It's the 15 minute time frame. okay? The same thing we see, what is this over here? Aren't they smooth? These are smooth. These are smooth. It's all part of that same consolidation, isn't it? What do we have right there? It stepped outside of it. 